Hey guys, Reese, Vidu, April 3rd, 2019. Uh, today I have a little bit of a different sort of podcast. I wanted to uh, start introducing some of the people that I meet on my travels. And the first person I'd like to bring in is a great guy. I met him in London. His name is Vasa. He's a Bitcoin artist or a cryptocurrency artist. And with that, I'd like to say hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us, dude. Hey man, pleasure to be hanging out with you again. We had a blast the last time, so I suspect this one's no different. I don't think we can talk about everything we did, but uh, I think I ended up walking home at about four o'clock in the morning through the streets of London, which was an experience in and of itself. So had a great night. So I just wanted to, this again, like I said, short form, maybe you could just tell the people what you do and, uh, and that's a piece behind you and we could just talk a little bit about that. So take it away. Sure, man. Uh, I just started being a creative when I was five years old with my parents' pots and pans turned into a drum set and then eventually became a professional filmmaker uh, to light some substance as to why I call myself a crypto artist these days. Is Ten years ago, I made a documentary film about the monetary system and when I realized what it was and, and long and the short of it eventually became a crypto artist once I realized how important this whole innovation is for the, that for the first time in 6,000 years, kings and governments don't solely control the issues of money. It was an endlessly inspiring journey. Uh, and I, I started making, making art for and about this new money. And now I do keynotes and presentations and company commissions all over the world uh, trying to uh, illuminate the subject to those who might have only heard a bit about Bitcoin in passing. And, of course, something cool for those who are on the inside of this space already like you and me. Yeah, well, I, I got to say, I saw your stuff. I loved it. So people got to check it out. We'll get some links at the bottom. But I didn't know about the movie. What was the movie called? Is it on YouTube? Can people check it out? Or Yeah, it was the, the Finnish version of the Zeitgeist series. And uh, I don't know if you've uh, seen that famous series. It's a very uh, yes. critical critical movie on, on many aspects. But we didn't go into the uh, conspiracies of the Twin Towers or religion or that kind of thing. We basically just presented the monetary system and a part of the corruption in it. And then, of course, the, the futurist Jacques Fresco of what his, uh, what his solutions were. And, of course, a little bit later on in my evolution, I realized that a lot of the stuff is quite immersed in communism and a lot of very bad ideas that already led to the massacre of 100 million people in the past. And that sort of got balanced along the way of, uh, uh, quite a bit. And it's, it's been an interesting political and spiritual journey that I've been on thus far. And... And maybe just a little bit about the piece just behind me. It's the second of the ancient three. It's called Stereoscopic. And essentially, it has the Bitcoin logo in the center and these two blocks on either side. And uh, the whole idea is that it kind of looks almost like a modern art mess, kind of like a Jackson Pollock or something like that to those who might have not seen the Bitcoin logo or not been uh, involved in the cryptocurrency space. It just looks like what the hell is this new money? What, what's it got to do with anything? Or is that even art the type of conversation? But what's really going on is, a, is an abstraction. It's like once you see the logo and you see the blocks and the depth of it reveals itself and it's almost like being sucked into a rabbit hole of a whole world unraveling in front of you that you not, had no idea was in front of you actually all this time. Kind of like yeah. learning about the monetary system or these very important evolutions that are happening at the moment. So... Uh, I, I do like to usually have very concrete and very sort of uh, easily, uh, um, I wouldn't say absorbable pieces because all of them take time. But in order to uh, get invited to something, it's usually good to have something concrete. And uh, as opposed to most of my other pieces, this is very unconcrete. It's almost all abstraction. It's almost like a language that if you don't speak it at all, it, it just flies past you. And this, mm. is, this is the idea of this one. That's really cool. What's what? What? Just the name of the piece, like the sorry, the um, the movie. What was it called? Uh, Zeitgeist. Oh, you did you did Zeitgeist literally in the Finnish version. Uh, like yeah, we used Finnish experts, uh, political figures, and and those who had the uh, had the credibility to speak on that uh, documentary to basically do the worldview of the zeitgeist in terms of just the monetary system and the potential solutions for it with Finnish experts, with the Finnish language, because we realized that this was a really, really important message for people to understand. Uh, Cause at that time already we started seeing people polarizing uh, much more to the left and right. And 
the politically uh, correct speech is emerging and all of these phenomena that is now obvious were then uh, visible to some of us uh, at that point. And we wanted to focus the conversation into what we perceive to be the root of everything, which is the, the monetary system. Unless we, if we don't fix this monetary system, we, we create uh, all of these problems that now seemingly have uh, as as the front as PC culture or disenfranchisement yeah. or totalitarianism or all of this the whole thing is essentially because our our system is is broken in a very bad way and we instead of fighting each other and the left and the right we we need to fix the system that is causing a lot of this uh, stuff in order for people to calm down and that's what we already then wanted to do is to guide the conversation where I thought a lot of the ills are coming from as opposed to just fighting the symptoms. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. Is if you can't fix the money, you can't fix the politics. That's just the way it goes. It doesn't work the other way around. So I, I'm a hundred percent behind that. If you're not, you know, politics as usual. So it's, uh, it's really all about the money. That's, that's fascinating. Uh, the one thing I was also wanted to ask you about, cause you, you mentioned it last time we talked was you're putting your pieces on the blockchain. Uh, just basically today I uploaded one of them, um, it, it's called Alive, and it was first one of the first uh, motion pieces, and I call it breathwork series because it's almost like these breathing aids that expand and contract, uh, kind of like with your breath, and this one was inspired by EOS, so it has the logo as the central figure of it, and I uploaded it to Codex Protocol, which is an Ethereum-based uh, provenance system. And uh, it was a cool thing because basically after making this, uh, this uh, moving art piece, uh, I think it was less than an hour after I uploaded it to the site that it was already sold to someone for three Ethereum. And it was quite an encouraging Excellent. Uh, thing. Now moving on to also doing these digital pieces and, and tokenizing them. Uh, so I've already used provenance for quite a long time, but I haven't been tokenizing the art yet. And I have about maybe 350 digital art pieces for my previous two platforms already, like high quality stuff ready to be tokenized. But the, the problem at the moment that I see with a lot of the different uh, art platforms in crypto is that you have quite a few creatives, and I wouldn't say necessarily the quality is yet that great. Uh, and those platforms haven't yet met the investors. And that's part of the reason that the quality isn't great. So serious investors aren't there yet. It's all sort of formulating and coming together. But I definitely uh, think that it's the future of the whole of the art world is that we're moving towards that direction. And it's great to be a, a part of the forefront of, of, of uh, this whole avalanche that is that is coming and, and basically challenging this very conservative art world as well. And uh, it's been great to see that some of the uh, some of the companies or people in the art world that traditionally have been very resistant to change have started to embrace uh, the ones that have uh, really taken care of, like Codex Protocol. I mean, look at the whole team and look at their whole infrastructure. Uh, they basically cater to the serious people coming in. So it's it's one of those things. It's it's like uh, just sensing the right time and the place and, and just being a part of the conversation as it happens. But I haven't really found, in terms of an art platform yet, uh, the one way would feel like a good fit for me to upload some, some of the, the substantial pieces. Some of them have taken me two years to make just one art piece. So they're, they're not, they're massive productions and I can't just put them in, in somewhere where the average price is maybe something like one Ethereum. Because if I put the actual price in there right now for this art piece to tokenize as a, uh, let's say if it's a unique piece, for example, it makes no sense whatsoever for me to put the actual price there. Sure, for sure. So, and I mean, first off, congratulations. That's amazing news. Super happy for you for doing the sale. And right. secondly is like, so you're, these are non-fungible art pieces. I mean, you can imagine this with the music world and the photography world and everything as well. These are non-fungible pieces. The user buys it. They own the artwork. It's not like Crypto Kitty where you own the token. You actually own the artwork as well, correct? Sure. Yeah. yeah. And is, is the user able to do what they like with that? So like, let's say advertisers want to take one of your pieces. Are they able, is it like free and open for them to do what they want with their art once they bought it? Um, well, I would say that if, because you, you basically, you own the token and you, if the, you, it's a conversation to be had. I haven't laid down the groundwork uh, uh, properly yet of what you can or cannot do with it because I haven't had a, 
company buy them or necessarily try to do something with it. Let's say with this EOS piece, if it was a company that had bought it and then used all of their advertising and it was a, like a big enterprise and they paid me like three Ethereum for it, it wouldn't feel fair at mm-hmm. all. That, that's not a, that's not cool, man. Uh, that's, I agree. I agree. I'm wondering about the terms and conditions and stuff. But like you said, I guess it's early days in the wild west there. So, yeah, it, so don't it up, is a little. Don't, up, don't upload your best pieces quite yet. I guess is the the news for any other yeah. out there. <laughs> that's part of it. But that's a really good point. I do, I do have to start putting the terms and conditions into the into the blockchain verified pieces so people know what's up. So uh, there's no at least if someone then does something that immediately doesn't feel fair, then I can point to something as opposed to just saying that that was more wrong. And it, that would be my fault for not specifying the terms, right? Yeah. And I guess also, cause I know I met you and I just don't, I don't think you're going to want your pieces used for stuff that you don't agree with politically. So, I mean, I, maybe you do, I don't know, but I mean, that would oh, be de- de- well. definitely. Uh, that's, that's not something that I would like to have happen, especially in these this day and age where it's like been a small step up for uh, st- step out from the sort of what what you can or cannot say can land you into serious trouble. And if you get associated with the wrong crowd or the wrong kind of thing, and yeah. whatever that can have serious ramifications for not only the career but the whole of the uh, character that is pr- being portrayed to the public. So that's that's a very touchy touchy subject, I suppose. Cool. Well, I, I like to keep these videos short. I think this was an excellent one. I really appreciate your time, Vesa. Um, to everybody out there, we're going to try and get some links from him. If you're finished, we'll get that Zeitgeist piece so you can watch that. And uh, please check him out. His art is really mind-blowingly good. So as always, everybody, be good and thanks for watching.